What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our SEC football channel. All right. It's a not a major week of games because of all the COVID issues out there and bye weeks and so forth, but we've got four games, eight teams involved uh, in the SEC coming up this weekend. Again, Auburn, Ole Miss, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Mizzou, and South Carolina goes to LSU to take on the Tigers. We got uh, Brent Beard from uh, First Coast News. You can also catch him on College Sports Today. Brent, how you doing tonight? Mark, I'm doing well, my friend. It's always good to be on with you. Uh, I am fresh from Alabama, Georgia. I had a chance to go up and be in attendance for the game and uh, got back here. Obviously, we live in the Jacksonville area, uh, and we're waiting and hoping uh, with the Florida fans that they can get, back, get, can get back on the field and you start practicing, much less to have a game. So uh, uh, Gators with Missouri next week, uh, and then Georgia, Florida the following week, Mark, the first time in recent memory that Georgia and Florida will not have an off week before they play each other. So that is quite unusual in this series. But again, uh, Florida's had the time off, Georgia off uh, this week. Uh, so uh, uh, listen, this, uh, this schedule that changes brother by the day uh, is causing some things that we quite, we've never seen before, but uh, we can adapt and go with it from there. So speaking of adapting, Brent, if you're able to, we would love to see uh, your bright smile uh, completely. If you're able to adjust the uh, the shot there, that would be great because yeah. I'm not able to adjust the graphics there. They are what they are. And so okay. they, they run great. right across that line. Perfect. It's fine. Good. That good. That looks good. Brent, I don't know another time in covering SEC football or college football in general that we've had the continuous storyline of an off the field issue that we've had to deal with, with this COVID situation. So in addition to just covering the week, the week nuts and bolts of the, the wins and the losses, and then the wrinkles of the quarterback controversies and everything connected to the field. It has just been this running issue of having to deal with uh, the COVID situation. Well, it is, but I, but I'll say this, I, I give the league a lot of credit. They knew and commissioner Greg Sankey knew going into this year, that they were going to have to have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, and that obviously means that, uh, that every team will have a, obviously they've got their buy. And then we've got the uh, uh, December the 12th uh, Saturday to be able to fill in the gaps with some of these games. Uh, for instance, Florida being able to play LSU at that point instead of playing them uh, originally when it was scheduled. But the other good thing about it is, uh, Mark, is we haven't had any games canceled. Uh, and I, I think that's important at this point. And, and look, uh, the, 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 uh, a lot of these Power Five schools, particularly in the SEC, I mean, they've virtually got many hospitals uh, on, on campus where they can take care of, the, of their students. I, I, I think these guys, uh, and, and to me, instead of bemoaning any games that we get, we miss or we get postponed, we need to be able to celebrate the ones that we play. So uh, I was certainly one that thought we should go ahead and have the season, uh, give the protocol a chance to take care of itself. I think it has at this point. Uh, now, again, um, and, and I know this is SEC, not Big Ten, but the problem with the Big Ten, when they get started, Mark, there is no wiggle room. There are no off weeks uh, in that situation if something happens. So uh, I, I certainly wish them the best. We're glad they're playing Pac-12 following suit shortly after that. But the SEC really did a good job in preparing for this. And, and frankly, I think the team like Florida, I mean, Florida's off. Uh, they practice again on Monday. Uh, they're doing the Zoom thing, uh, which I'm sure they're tired of that, but that's just the reality of it. And they're working out uh, on their own. Uh, too. So, but the good thing is uh, they played some games. These guys should be in shape. Uh, I'm sure they're toning up at this point. Uh, but again, um, I, I, I give credit where it's due with the individual schools and with the conference for setting this up, Mark, to where uh, we would be able to get as many of these games in as possible. 
So it's a tremendous uh, two points that you make right there. I just want to underline them. Number one, because I'm, I'm sure a few people out there might have made a few double takes and shook their head when you said, well, we haven't had any games canceled. Let's understand the difference between postponement and no. cancellation. People are right. thinking, well, the Missouri-Florida game got canceled, or this game got canceled, or that game got canceled, or Vandy and Mizzou. Uh, no, the SEC, by playing as soon as it did, uh, has that uh, luxury, that flexibility to be able to reassign games. And at this point, there haven't been enough postponed to not be able to make those up. So they're in a good position right now. We know at, at the point that I've stopped charting, which was maybe a week or two ago, and but I think the percentages pretty much hold true, that about 85% of these games are being played. Uh, so it goes without saying that the, SC, or that the uh, Big Ten, to your point, and the Pac-12 may run into some issues in trying to complete a full season. Uh, we hope for the very best that they're fortunate and blessed to be able to conclude a reasonable amount of games to be able to play a reasonable season. But it's unlikely that they're going to be able to play all the games. And that's one of the big pluses of being the Big 12, the ACC, and the SEC to a lesser extent of getting out there and playing in front of this thing to have that scheduling flexibility, which is ironic because as you well know, Brent, the Big 10 was the one that was going to start before everyone else yeah, initially absolutely. so that they had more flexibility yeah, in the schedule. Sure, yeah, and hopefully again, the, and I think what's exciting, and people may not realize this, but we've got some of these other conferences that are gonna be starting uh, in the next few weeks, which will probably give us some some good, maybe some action before it's over, Mark, and some, Tuesday, Wednesday games along with Thursday. So, uh, listen, I, I, I never thought that college football should ever surrender to the NFL. They need to keep that Thursday night game going. But, but hopefully, we'll get some, and I'm and I'm sure we will in November, some Tuesday and Wednesday night games too. Yeah, I was just going to say, if it's a night of the week, there's probably going to be a Mac game on. So, so just just flip on, you know, yeah. find your, your yeah. favorite ESPN alternate mm -hmm. channel, and you're going right. to find a a game from action at some point. I, I got to credit Brent. Uh, he sends me an email and I'm sure other people receive it as well. Each and every day that is just a voluminous uh, documentation of notes and stats and trends and facts, both reviewing the previous weekend and then also looking forward to that weekend in college football. And I just uh, gained so much from it. So Brent, thank you for that. Absolutely. And, and this guy, each and every time I have him on, uh, it just shows himself to be so valuable in reviewing what is going on in the SEC and uh, at Florida State in particular in diving into the ACC. So, so Brent, I'm going to leave it um, carte blanche in regards to your impression of the first four to five weeks in the SEC and what really catches your eye. But I'm going to I'm going to slightly lean you in one direction because okay. I'm fascinated with this Arkansas football program. Well, you read my mind. I, I was going to mention them first. Uh, and, and look, Sam Pittman um, uh, has said on Sports Center that this is his last job. Uh, I, I'm not sure I'd have told that, as Sonny Smith, the Auburn basketball coach, says from time to time. But again, um, he's done a tremendous job. And, and let's be honest, they really should have won uh, that Auburn game also on that, on that awful call. Uh, when Bo Nix threw the ball behind him, the the uh, the league is kind of uh, it, it kind of straightened that out, shall we say, as far as the rule is concerned. But sure didn't help help Arkansas then. But look, that what they have done, I, I think, has been extremely remarkable. They have a lot of confidence, and this is basically with Chad Morris's players uh, and what they've been able to do to get those guys uh, unified. And look, the Bros Award winner right now, uh, I don't I don't think there's any use to wasting more time with this, is Barry Odom, uh, the, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, who was a coach of Missouri, ha has frankly done about as good a job uh, defensively as I've seen, uh, for instance, with, with what they've done so far. Grant Morgan, who's a walk-on, is among the uh, nation's top tacklers at this point. Uh, they've got 13 takeaways in four games. They had 16 takeaways last year and 12. So that's progress, isn't it, Mark, to be able to see what they have done uh, defensively. Hudson Clark, 
three picks versus Ole Miss. Now, he will be awarded a scholarship in January. <laughs> that's, that's amazing to think about that. And thank you for that Arkansas State, Appalachian State reminder for tomorrow night at 730. Uh, but uh, still, I mean, the the Hogs um, at this point, they've allowed 11 sacks. They're 72 uh, second in the nation in rushing, that they're not doing a whole lot there. I think Rakeem Boyd coming back is going to help them. But right now, I would say at this point, uh, Arkansas is one of the better stories that we've had in the league, quite Mark, in quite a while. It's been fun to watch, and uh, the most entertaining game for me last weekend was watching them take on Ole Miss and watch all that bevy of turnovers. Uh, there are a few things in football more exciting than a pick six, and Arkansas gave us a couple, plus the hat trick as well, and Hudson Morgan, Hunter Morgan, playing out of his mind at linebacker, and Bumper Pool supposed to be back here pretty soon for an Arkansas team that is a whole lot of fun to watch, and um, again, uh, then you got Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin, of course. They're only one in three, but uh, they're the most entertaining one in three team yeah. in the country as oh, well, Brent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Matt Corral, who was at Florida for a while uh, before deciding to go to Ole Miss, has just been a – I mean, he, he's done an incredible job, frankly. Now, uh, now what, what happened is uh, teams now are – uh, uh, or being able to zone them a little bit more. For instance, Alabama just went man to man, but now you, you're seeing a little bit more of that. But still, uh, Corral's been tremendous. Uh, Elijah Moore has 42 catches already, uh, and, and we're not even in November yet. So Elijah Moore, known for, obviously for his uh, antics in the Mississippi State Ole Miss game in the Egg Bowl last year, but what a what a really good receiver that he is. Uh, Ely at running back, I've been really impressed with him at this time, too. And they've got a fascinating game uh, with Auburn. Uh, and you, you've got a situation where they can score uh, on almost any given play. Uh, and, and, gosh, when uh, Lane Kiffin is able to get his own guys in there, but it's going to be incredible what they're going to be able to do. But, but I'm with you. I, I, the, the, their defense is awful. Let's be honest about that. I mean, right now there's 77 teams playing in their defensive stats. I mean, in, in rush defense, they're 75. Pass defense, they're 72. Total defense, they're 76. So uh, pretty easy to see what uh, what area that recruiting be concentrating on in the offseason for the Rebels. So we'll now get to the game and the two teams that obviously catch uh, most of the attention in the conference because these two have separated themselves. Florida will have something to say, but Bama's pretty much already won the SEC West because AM looks like the second best team and they yeah. dusted them off by four touchdowns. So what do you make of this uh, Alabama-Georgia game that certainly for one half of football delivered everything we could possibly want out of these two teams? And then even deep into the third, early fourth quarter, Georgia was still right there despite all the miscues. But then, boom, they're down 34-24, and then they get a bad uh, turnover, and then it's it's all said and done. And I hate the narratives that come out of these kind of games when the expectations are this high that one team choked. And then also when it gets laid at the feet of one particular player, and that's, of course, Stetson Bennett. Well, look, I, I, Stetson Bennett got them where they were uh, going into the game, and Stetson Bennett played as well within the, his limitations, I think, as he could. Now, he had seven tipped or batted passes uh, in the game, but that brings up the point of what are they going to do now with this off week and then going into the Kentucky game uh, at quarterback, and then obviously you got Florida coming up uh, for, for basically what's going to decide probably the Eastern Division, unless Kentucky can grab in there and and, uh, and, and bolster Mark's pick with that. So uh, the at, at this point, uh, I think what they're going to decide to do is how mobile that JT Daniels is going to be. Now, look, we don't know if JT – we know JT Daniels is good – well, we don't know if he can play dead in a cowboy movie right now for Georgia until he gets on the field. So my understanding is what's going on there is he obviously had the ACL surgery at USC. Uh, he has got some some stiffness in that knee, uh, and uh, they're hoping to get him more mobile. Uh, certainly Todd Munkin does not want him to be a statue out there standing out there by himself in order to get hit. 
So I, I think that's a big situation that they've got to deal with. But that, but Mark, that doesn't mean Stetson Bennett's is not going to play anymore. Stetson Bennett again uh, at this point has the most experience on this team and has been the most effective. So uh, you can't throw him out with the bathwater, shall we say? But I, I, I think one thing they've got to do if they play him, uh, he don't he doesn't need to be throwing forty passes. Uh, they need to they need to run the ball more. More but people may not realize this. But they averaged nearly five yards a carry against Alabama. Uh, and Kendall Milton, uh, Zamir White, Zeus, uh, I thought they played well behind the offensive line. I think they will balance that if they play Alabama again in the SEC championship game. And we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves here. But, um, but I think if they would have had more balance in that game, that they would have probably stayed in the game uh, a little bit longer. But the, the, the reality is right now, Alabama's got a quarterback in Mac Jones, who is from here in Jacksonville, the bowl school, uh, played for the late Corky Rogers, went probably the greatest high school coach in Florida, uh, state of Florida history. So he has really grown with that offense under Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, I mean, having Waddle and Smith as wide receivers and Mechie, and then obviously Najee Harris. Alabama defense certainly improved during that game. Uh, and, and just really kind of overwhelmed Georgia. Uh, they had the ball for nearly 12 of the 15 minutes in the fourth quarter uh, to be able to salt the game away. Uh, look, season over for Georgia. Georgia's like Florida. They've got everything in front of them. Uh, Florida does, even even with the A&M loss. If they beat Georgia, and then if, uh, obviously the same thing if Georgia beat Florida. So at, at, at the same time, it was a game of two heavyweights uh, for a lot of that game. It enjoyed being able to be there mentally, even in the midst of it, – it was strange to have 20,000 in Bright Denny when you're expecting 100,000, uh, but they uh, they sound like 100,000 on a few occasions there. But uh, great game between two of the best teams in the conference uh, who very well may be playing again at the end of the year. 